Welcome to week 7 of UABC's Tea Room. <laughs> My name is Shirley and, and I am the current president of the Badminton Club and I will be your host for this week's podcast which will be talking about being a female in a competitive sport and in this case it'll be badminton as you know. So with me today I have three guests um, that have been and are still members of our club and they will kind of introduce themselves along here just so we have a general sense of who I have with me today. So I guess we can always start off with Priscilla. Hi everybody, so my name is Priscilla. I just graduated from the University of Alberta from the chemical engineering program. I am from Edmonton, Alberta. I was actually an exec for the badminton club for about three years, I think. And I have been playing badminton for 10 years now. And Shirley asked me to say what level player I am. I'm a solid B level player. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Thanks, Priscilla. Mm -hmm. And next person we have as well is Miriam. Uh, hi, guys. My name is Miriam. And I go to... Um, the U of A in Faculty of Medicine. Um, I'm originally from Calgary, and I would say I've been playing for about 15 years now. Uh, my level of play is ex-competitive. Okay, thanks Miriam. And last but not least, we also have Amanda here with us today as well. Hi everyone, my name's Amanda. I also graduated this year from McEwen University doing a speech language pathologist assistant program. I've been playing badminton for over 10 years, but I really only started doing tournaments um, about eight years ago. And I'm kind of like Priscilla. I'm like B-level play in uh, recreational as well as a little bit of Alberta series tournaments. Awesome. Well, excellent. Thank you so much for that, ladies. Um, and I just want to let people know as well, I guess I should let people know I've been playing for kind of 10-ish years. I play more on like like a competitive recreational side, but probably not as intense as some other people, such as the Alberta Badminton Series and things like that. More so kind of like smaller tournaments in Edmonton. So thanks again for all of you for being able to join us for today. So I want to kind of start off um, talking about, you know, our all of our journeys from badminton from, I guess, I think most of us start potentially playing when we're younger, maybe elementary, junior high-ish to now. And I... And I, one thing I have noticed too for like myself, um, I think some of you may, may be able to speak to this experience is how as you get older and it gets a little bit more competitive, it becomes kind of more like there's less and less females in a way to kind of play with. But even in junior high, there weren't many like females that joined like the badminton team if you guys had participated in that. Um, so what was, I guess... That was my experience, but like, what was your guys' experience in terms of like when you started out playing when you're younger and you played on teams and stuff, whether it's in school or outside of school? Um, so for me, my dad actually kind of ran, and he's he still tries to run like this, a uh, little badminton club in our church because our church has a gym with three courts, mm -hmm. and he trains like pretty much anyone like family friends people from church mm -hmm. and I went to this club when I was little purely just like for fun and my mom wanted me to do stuff mm -hmm. and when I was younger like you said Shirley mm -hmm. there were um some more girls in the club but as I got older there were a lot of girls like not really coming back or they would mm -hmm. um, go on to other sports mm -hmm. so there weren't a lot of girls kind of like staying in that club with me and I didn't really get to experience that until I went to like um the Royal Glenora when I met more girls my age and in high school mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think that's like the one of the things I also saw as well like what you were saying about how there weren't very many girls that came back and if anything, I, I don't know if it was the same for you guys. For me, I noticed in junior high and high school, high school especially, um, I think a lot of the coaches too would have to start actively recruiting more females just to even like fill the spots because like there weren't even 
enough people to cover up like the actual playing spots like nonetheless having extras and things like that but then um like being somebody who was more like into badminton and liked enjoyed playing a bit more competitively I always also felt kind of too that you know they you were more so kind of pushed in a direction where they needed you to play more strongly such as um like singles you know because I think a lot of the time coaches if they see you as a strong player they like putting you on your own just because they believe that you'll be able to handle it a little bit better than some other female players have any of you guys had any experiences similar to that growing up and playing on teams yeah I kind of had that similar experience Mm -hmm. in junior high and high school I would Mm -hmm. say badminton isn't really like super popular Mm -hmm. out of all like your school sports right like compared to basketball and volleyball it's not like people would be like oh I want to go join the badminton team it's (laughs) like (laughs) not really the top of the list really when they think about it Mm -hmm. and it kind of happens at the same time as other sports like rugby and track and field and whatnot so some people tend to lean towards those Mm -hmm. and like you said it is hard to find like those female players and then when you do they kind of want to they kind of want to arrange your team to play in a way that you'll win the most games and whatnot right so Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I at the beginning I did kind of get assigned got assigned to play singles a little bit more than I had liked Mm -hmm. because honestly singles is really hard Mm -hmm. and (laughs) and for myself I was somebody that trained from a really young age or anything like Mm -hmm. by no means was looking to be competitive from like five years old or anything like Mm -hmm. that right so it's like almost as a late starter it was hard in that way too because a lot of the girls had gone to clubs and stuff they've done training with Mm -hmm. coaches and everything so Mm -hmm. it's really like if you have a good coach, so um, with the school, they mm-hmm. can really like help you find your strengths and whatnot. So I was lucky that both of um, my junior high and high school coaches were super nice and kind of helped me through that and eventually turned into more of a doubles player. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I can totally see that. I like that too. I think coaches in general like try, especially for badminton sometimes, I don't know, it's just they just try to be more supportive if you they notice that like they put you in an area where you might not like it as much Mm -hmm. um have like how did I guess how did it how did you feel about it being put into a position you weren't really comfortable in playing fully such as singles Mm -hmm. well in a way I guess it's like it's still a team sport at the end of the day if you're joining the school team even though you're playing on your own in singles Mm -hmm. but you do kind of want to represent your school and whatnot and do well Mm -hmm. so I think like there's that mentality there that you want to be almost like the underdog you know like oh that girl that could play singles really well but um it does take a lot of training a lot of practice having the coaches around just really helped with being able to help you see kind Mm -hmm. of things that you can't see yourself Mm -hmm. and then you can kind of take that advice from them Mm -hmm. and apply it in your own way and try to figure out your playing style and so on Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. and definitely yeah it's not it was not an easy journey mm-hmm. but um just having that team mentality I think really helped oh, that's good. I think I just wanted to add on to that I feel like even though like there is a badminton team and you get along with everybody in the team mm-hmm. um when you're playing singles um it kind of takes away from a little bit of the social aspect of badminton mm-hmm. um I feel like I would have had um you know, a lot closer of a bond to say like a partner if I was to play doubles versus if I uh, was, you know, basically put into the position of singles throughout mm-hmm. my um, school badminton career. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I can definitely see that as well, just because like, even when you're training and stuff and having that partner to train with, or like you're training with like other doubles teams, like on your team and things like that, you get more people, more interaction and things like that. And, and just knowing that you have somebody to kind of improve with is, I guess, a different feeling. But I guess there's like pros and cons from uh, in being able to train in singles and in playing training in doubles and things like that. Most of you might have had to play singles in junior high and high school. Like what were the biggest other things you feel that you kind of miss out on aside from like the social aspect of playing doubles like if if any I don't know (laughs) like if it's like if you're put into playing something but you liked something else a lot better like I really really want to play mixed but I wasn't able to 
Um, yeah. It just felt like I see what you, mean. you kind of you're missing out a bit, you know? Like, even for if you could just do it for one year, like, I don't know if you guys had that kind of, like, feeling where you just want to try it for a bit. And I don't Yeah, know. I had that feeling where, like Miriam said, it's obviously more fun to have a partner to play with and train with and such. Mm. And it's definitely nice to have somebody to share the court with Mm -hmm. and when you're training with your friends a little bit different than just training one-on-one with your school coach and so on Mm -hmm. so there's always that and just personally for me because when I played outside of school I played a lot of doubles so it's Mm -hmm. just something you're more comfortable with and it seemed a lot more fun the playing style was a lot faster Mm -hmm. and and such so like looking at people play doubles I did want to be able to play doubles as well and Mm -hmm. eventually did get into that maybe in like the later years Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah it's crazy though because I think like if you go into like the junior highs or high schools now like I don't know this for a fact but I like I think there might be even more female players now because just because with so many gyms popping up in both Edmonton and Calgary it just seems like people are starting to train at a more younger age because there's more kind of like resources and coaching available in junior high. I knew some people in junior high at the time in Calgary, and they were just training through like one or two places such as like Elite. I don't know if you remember that, Miriam, like yeah yeah I was part of that when I was younger yeah or like what's it black night black night training or something like that uh yeah something I I believe there was a club like that Mm -hmm. and then now you like see that there's like a couple different places there's a lot more people that are like playing higher level and more coaching and things like that um in current playing so I think it's crazy how it's transitioned um how has I guess how has badminton kind of transitioned for you guys in terms of what it's like to play more recreational slash competitive ish now outside of school. Um, I know in Edmonton they have sometimes like the Kings tournament or like the Be Active tournaments, or also like I know some of you might even playing Alberta series as well, just because it has that more competitive edge. I think one of the biggest shifts from going from like school tournaments to like uh, city tournaments mm-hmm. and the fun stuff like you mentioned, Kings. Mm-hmm is that the draw changes significantly because in school tournaments, um, there was like a requirement, like uh, however many players from this school would be needed, however many Mm. players from this school. Mm. Whereas in these city tournaments, it's Mm. totally optional to sign up. Mm. So a lot of the female draws become so small. Like I remember in one of the tournaments, the women's doubles draw became so small that we had to do a round robin rather than a waterfall elimination like most tournaments usually do which of course has its pros and cons but just seeing how small it is it's like oh I know most of the people in this round robin anyway so Mm -hmm. I'm just playing the same people over and over again Mm -hmm. and I know in the Nate tournament for singles Mm -hmm. if you sign if you were a girl and signed up for women's singles I think every year they end up pushing the women's singles and combining it with the men's singles so Mm -hmm. um there's a little bit of a disadvantage there if you want to play like true woman singles but I don't play singles so (laughs) not a problem I have to worry about but I know other people want to yeah I think to add on to that it's kind of something that we see more often in the like the community tournaments rather than on Mm -hmm. like a like a competitive like Alberta series level Mm because there are like those consistent players that um, Mm -hmm. that sign up for those levels of play but particularly Mm -hmm. for those that play at like the Kings tournaments, the Nate tournaments, and so on. We do see that a lot now. Okay. So so as you go up into playing more competitive badminton, such as like Alberta series, I'm guessing, um, I know you're saying how there's more like consistent groups of people that like per- like playing those type of tournaments, but does, does the pool of participants in terms of the number of females that play, does it get smaller or is it still the same but just different people? I feel like it gets smaller and smaller, but it's usually the same people and everyone just kind of gets, that's how you get to know uh, people in the community. But that's just from my experience. I don't know what it's like um, that much in Calgary, apart from badmintology. I kind of know a little bit, but for Edmonton, like the Kings and the the Nate tournament, Mm -hmm. it's usually the same girls that I see over and over again. Mm -hmm. 
I definitely agree with Amanda. Um, I feel like when I was younger, like in the junior circuit, there used to be more girls um, that come out and play. Mm -hmm. But once I aged out of the U19 category, Mm -hmm. um, even if you go to Alberta series or um, these fun tournaments, Mm -hmm. there's a lot less females participating. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you think is one of the potential reasons to why there's less kind of females moving towards like more competitive badminton because like that's one thing I've always kind of thought about but I could never really didn't really know why um I feel like when you're younger Mm -hmm. um your parents kind of put you into training (laughs) I'm I'm just saying yeah (laughs) so I feel like in training you see a lot of girls who come and train and you know like um get like privates and all that kind of stuff right um but but on the recreational side you don't see nearly as many females coming out and just playing for fun Mm -hmm. whereas you Mm -hmm. see a lot of guys doing that so Mm -hmm. I feel like um they just don't come out and build that that social badminton network Mm -hmm. so then they don't continue on with it when they become adults and I think it might also kind of be relating to like um, when you're in the junior circuit or when you play, like, uh, school tournaments, a lot of the times it might be, like, parents or teachers, like, kind of encouraging um, kids, uh, young girls to go into tournaments, whereas when you kind of, like, a uh, late teen or the adult years, mm-hmm. you kind of have that autonomy to choose whether you not whether you want to go into tournaments mm-hmm. or not, and maybe some girls, like, I know I still kind of hesitate on playing tournaments because even though they're so much fun and of course I never regret it, I'm Mm. always hesitant because I'm like, what's the point of playing when I know I'm going to get destroyed by these girls who have been training for way longer Mm. than me? And I think like myself, I'm intimidated by that. So of course, I think other people would be as well. And then it comes down to the choice of like whether you yourself actually want to play or not and it's not your parents kind of pressuring you anymore Mm -hmm. i have a question for like miriam and amanda because since you both are involved with coaching do you see that um like at the younger ages that there are more girls and then as you kind of (laughs) the age ladder that there are less girls that that actually come for coaching I don't know what it's like on the private lesson scale, but yeah, I'm a coach at Be Active, and I primarily work with um, the beginner classes, so like little kids in elementary and some in junior high, but um, at Be Active, we have multiple classes going at the same time, and there's one class in particular called Junior Competitive, and that's when there's like junior high and high school kids. There's one class, uh, both of the instructors are males, and the whole class is all males mm-hmm. except for like two girls and they always pair together Aww. and I kind of feel bad for them because they're not getting maybe the ex- the full experience that they want and then I get to play a like, real girls game and those guys not everyone's gonna get an experience of like a mixed game because they're playing the same girls like every single time mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's about the same um, here in Calgary. So I coach with Center Avenue Badminton. And I would say in our beginner program, the class is about evenly split between females and males. And then once you get to be about the junior high age, it's it's like what Amanda said, you drop down to maybe two girls in the mm-hmm. entire class. Mm-hmm is pretty insane and I sometimes I wish that there was more girls playing just because I think it's fun you know like you don't get very many opportunities to play things like women's doubles and I I, mm-hmm. I know that like you can play with like guys and things like that and you can still play doubles with them mm-hmm, of but, course but that, it's just not the same <laughs> yeah yeah that, that's how I feel too and I had that same kind of transition where there were less girls who wanted to play or like even if I knew some girls on like my team and school team and things like that they weren't as um into the sport I guess and so like they didn't want to like spend the weekends playing as much which is totally fine so then like my default was more so going to like play with my other friends who have mostly always guys and so I would try to play doubles with them just because it was some it was like nice to be able to like practice like the different rotation and not just play like the mixed rotation you know where like you're just always mostly standing in the front for like being a girl it just seems different like there's like a different type of pressure like do you guys know do you guys like understand what I'm trying to say I don't know if I'm explaining this very well 
I think I feel you on that, Shirley. It's kind of like trying to like keep up with them in a way, right? Like mm. with the pace and stuff. Because obviously when you're playing men's doubles, it could be a lot faster pace than when you're playing women's doubles or mixed doubles. Mm-hmm. So you kind of have to learn to play the double style. Because mm-hmm. sometimes when we compete, like we play mixed a lot, right? And mm-hmm. and as the female player, you're probably in charge of like being at the net and whatnot. So you kind of have to like develop the strengths to be able to play the backcourt so that yeah. everybody can have a good game. Because like if you're the only girl on court and the other three are guys, then... Yeah. Like, for me, I, like, feel bad if I'm, like, slowing down the pace of the game just because I'm, you know? Same, same. That's me all the time. Yeah, I totally fair. But I, like, I, I, I still do appreciate it. Like, don't, like, don't get me wrong. Like, listeners, don't get me wrong. Like, I do appreciate it in a way because I think being able to play in, like, that more, like, what you were saying, Priscilla, like, the fast-paced environment, if you do decide to, like, transition to playing women double sometimes, like, I think it helps you also develop your doubles play and, like, the back play mm-hmm. a lot better just because you have to, like, learn how to, like, really place your shots if, if you, by chance, can't hit as hard. Or, like, if you, like, hit hard, if you do, like, hit hard, you still have to, like, be able to kind of control it and things like that from different places, so. Yeah, it's it's definitely not a bad thing to be playing with guys all the time, <laughs> because it does help us um, develop our strength in, like, receiving faster shots or, like, receiving smashes and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And then when you do go back and play doubles, it can it can actually translate really well. Mm-hmm. 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 I wanted to touch on badmintology, actually, because mm-hmm. uh, the most recent one that I played, which was over a year ago, mm-hmm. I was on a team with um, Priscilla, another girl, Celine, mm-hmm. um, Daniel from the previous episodes, and Hayden Zimmer, mm-hmm. and we were playing at the B level, and I think Priscilla can remember that a lot of the other teams um, playing the B level, mm-hmm. there weren't other like women on the team. I think there was like one lady on one of the other teams and maybe like one girl on Mm -hmm. another team like Mm -hmm. different age groups Mm -hmm. and so we were playing only mixed or like mixed versus men's doubles Mm -hmm. so even though like we're not playing like a true mixed game for the whole time we really had to learn to like kind of carry our weight against like two other guys Mm -hmm. and it was also like personally it was really satisfying when it's like mix versus men's doubles and then we're able to win that set and kind of get an advantage mm-hmm. over it and kind of prove is a bit of a strong word but kind of show that like we're able to play on the same level of you guys despite having like your entire team is all males but we have like uh, over half of our team are girls but we're still able to like play at the same level as you Mm -hmm. yes i agree Mm -hmm. (laughs) it is really fun though because like you don't you know like when we play recreationally at the club and you play like mixed against men's doubles it's probably like for fun and nobody's trying super hard Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but in that badmintology setting like everybody's going all in at it and Mm -hmm. to be able to like win those games or at least to have like good rallies like it feels good Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah and we came in second so i think that's a pretty good indicator that like we were able to like carry our weight against like all these other people Ooh, congrats. I didn't know you guys came in second. That's really good. Yeah, it was super fun. Priscilla and I won against Burton and Brandon Gunn, and we'll, oh. we're never going to let that down. <laughs> <laughs> we're never going to let it down. <laughs> oh, oh, you goodness. heard it again, folks. We beat Burton and Brandon Gunn. Oh, okay. <laughs> That sounds like a very competitive game. It's just for giggles at the end of the day. I know. Yeah. I, know. Yeah. I guess it's, like, a bit better because, like, you're friends with them, so it doesn't mm-hmm. seem, like, as intense. Like, it can kind of, like, hurt other people if they don't know you as well, if they're, especially, like, for some people play play men's doubles. and like Because I think sometimes the expectation is almost, like, if it's a men's doubles playing against mix, like, it's almost an expectation for, like, the men's doubles to win. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah that's true and I think that's kind of like the reason behind those like point advantages that they do in these like co-ed tournaments mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but that really gives the opportunity to play in a more like a variety of different um combinations of teams though mm-hmm. 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 and then truly I was gonna ask like the question of what do you guys think about those point advantages because I think like um there's a lot of Uh, gray areas when it comes to these because um in the game where priscilla and i beat burton and brandon Mm -hmm. we did have i think a seven was it seven point advantage Mm -hmm. 
but we also worked really hard in that game and we played really really well like that was probably the last time I played that well (laughs) (laughs) like it was really it was a really good game that's a good question that was something that crossed my mind too I think that I think that's always gonna be an area of contention in a way especially like depending on who the players are for like examples like you're a really high level like national player female but like you still kind of want to play like in a, a community tournament in a way and you are technically like a female so it comes down to them being like do we still give you the point advantage or do we not give you the point advantage just because you know skill levels can vary even like if your Mm -hmm. genders are different and things like that um like I think overall like what I would think is that for now it seems like it's okay because generally the consensus seems that for people who do participate in tournaments the some a lot of the males like not all of them but just seems like the number of males that play very strongly versus the number of females that play very strongly um it's it's more than the female like the male one is more than the female but but that's just mm-hmm. kind of what I think mm-hmm. I think like you said um depending on the female player because mm-hmm. I'm sure some of us know um really really strong Uh, female players who do Mm -hmm. play in these recreational tournaments because Mm -hmm. like after all the recreational they're not like uh, alberta badminton sanctioned tournaments where a girl gets advantage over a guy of course not but um i think it's also up to um the female players uh choice whether they accept the advantage or not because Mm -hmm. i do know one player um and then she'll play like fun tournaments like the u of a one actually Mm -hmm. and for a lot of the games um, she was like, no, I don't want the point advantage because mm-hmm. um, she might not need it for that game. But for other games, she'll be like, um, to have like a really intense, fun game to watch, mm-hmm. she'll take that adva- She'll take that point advantage, and like it, of course, ends up being a really good game. So I think as long as it's not being like abused, because mm-hmm. of course this person won't take it unless she thinks she needs it for like a good game. Mm-hmm. I think it just boils down to like the sportsmanship there, right? Because mm-hmm. you obviously that's like, in the our, word. <laughs> yeah, in, I mean, in the badminton community, it's so small. You basically know like your opponent's ability too, I guess, right? In a mm-hmm. way, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. you kind of gauge that. Well, you mentioned Amanda that like for Nate, because the pool for women's singles is so small, that they uh, usually end up combining it with men's singles to play. So Mm -hmm. if instead of being gender-based point advantage, it was more like skill-based point advantage was what they were implementing. Uh, I think that would definitely be interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, It's just that it's it's hard for, I guess, tournament organizers to take into account everybody's skill level Mm -hmm. and know know what level everybody is at. Mm -hmm. But if, if you were to know that, I think that definitely would be a more fair way to do it. Yeah, I agree with Miriam on that. It's probably the fairest way to do your point advantages. It just might be kind of hard to implement and make sure, like, everybody... It's almost like an honor system, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. At that point. Mm-hmm. Definitely fair. So, since we're talking about point advantage, um, another thing that I kind of notice, I don't know if you guys have noticed this as well, I guess it's sometimes brought up um, if people are looking for a mixed, I think, like, for the U of A tournament, sometimes we have just all doubles, like, we don't split it up between, like, doubles and mixed doubles and things like that. Have you ever had an occasion with anyone where they kind of paired up with you as a partner because you were a female and they more so wanted the point advantage and not so much because they wanted you as a playing (laughs) partner? And if that has happened for you, like, what do you think, like, possible like I guess side not side effect that's a bad word it sounds like medications we're talking about (laughs) you know what I mean like the um, consequences yes yes thank you Priscilla (laughs) you you are the thesaurus for us today (laughs) yeah but have you guys ever had that because I I I feel like I've had that a couple times and I don't know if it's just me but it was more kind of like in those moments I like appreciated being asked but at the same time I was more kind of like like I had very conflicting <laughs> feelings about it, you know you're like oh I, I, I'm here for the points but you also asked me to be your partner so am I should I be flattered or like in my mind I'm like what can that potentially do to a person if they were to more to more take it personal you know yeah 
I think, um, so going back to that famintology tournament mm-hmm. where uh, Priscilla, Celine, and I were the only girls on our team and we had two other guys, mm-hmm. uh, Hayden and Daniel, yeah. I'm definitely not saying that they only use us for the point and advantage because yeah. they definitely did not. Like, um, <laughs> they totally respect our yep. skill level and everything. They're great people. But it was our strategy to play mixed doubles in the first set because mm. at Badmintology, I think they're the only tournament that allows you to, like, switch players mm. at um, 11 points. Mm. So we would kind of use mixed doubles to get the point advantage and mm. then switch into men's doubles after mm. 11 points to, like, kind of finish it off. Mm. And it worked because, like, we did really well, mm-hmm. not not only because of the point advantage, but because, like, we're all strong players. We were able to, like, kind of hold our ground. Mm-hmm. But I do remember, like, at that tournament, I definitely wish I could play more, like, B-level mixed, uh, mixed games, like, full mixed games Mm -hmm. and I really wanted to play women's doubles like fully throughout the thing so Mm -hmm. it is a little bit discouraging to only play half of a game to use the point advantage Mm -hmm. and of course it's fun in the end but I think it would be a little bit more rewarding if there were more females and on other teams and we were able to play like women's doubles and mixed doubles. Yeah I think the main problem is just that with the opposing teams that there aren't really that many female players when you get to the B levels and the A levels so you do end up having to play against almost like almost all male teams sometimes Mm -hmm. usually sometimes they'll maybe have one Mm -hmm. so you really don't get the chance to play women's doubles during Mm -hmm. these like team formatted Mm -hmm. um, tournaments and yeah being able to play only half a game does kind of suck sometimes because then you get cold yeah, and, uh, yeah, yeah. and then you have to play the next round again yeah. but like <laughs> it, it was strategic and if you had like a cool team and they were nice to you and whatnot mm-hmm. at the end of the day they still try to give you like um more matches to make up for playing only half mm-hmm. a set mm-hmm. yeah. yeah and like poor daniel and hayden were exhausted at the end I of know. the day because they were <laughs> playing literally every game oh my goodness and also watching because you can still see the other games happening in the, the tournament and there's definitely mm-hmm. other uh, B level uh, female players out there, but they might be playing in C because um, they have like a better chance of winning. So I'm like, I know you guys are the same level as us, but mm-hmm. you're just playing on a different level in the tournament. So mm-hmm. I wish they would just kind of come up just to play more women's doubles and mixed doubles. Mm-hmm. Um, speaking from like a tournament organizer kind of perspective, yeah. um, it's really nice that the point advantage gets guys to pull girls out to play. Mm-hmm. Like it's oh, really, yeah. really nice That's to fair. see mm-hmm. like that you are able to include some females. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, I feel like if we didn't have the point advantage, mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. like people would just make teams without females. Mm-hmm. So it's, I think it's, it's a good thing overall. I definitely didn't think about that, so thanks for bringing that up, Miriam. Yeah, Yeah, Miriam. I didn't think about that either, but that's a really good point, a really good, like, motivator, right? Yeah. Um, In fact, at the last, last Bantology tournament, Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, we're talking a lot about Bantology. They should pay uh, us for advertising for them. (laughs) We're not sponsored, though. (laughs) Not sponsored. (laughs) Yeah. Um, We actually had a female come in, um, she just happened to be visiting Calgary from Vancouver. Mm. Um, so it's, and then like literally all of her friends got, got her to play that ontology. Mm-hmm. So that was really awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, it could partially be, be, be because of the point advantage, mm-hmm. but, <laughs> but also I think it's great that she was able to come out and play. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I guess at the end of the day, there's always like pros and cons to things put in place, like even like the point advantage and things like that to at least help with the participation aspect of having, like, more females included in on it. I can definitely Mm -hmm. see that. We've talked a lot about playing more on the competitive side um, and a bit of the recreational side, but I also wanted to kind of touch base on another area that kind of near and dear to my heart in a way. From my experience, just because I think for me, I've always felt I've looked differently than other female badminton, like most other female badminton players, you know? Like, so for people who know me, like, I usually like to still dress nice and like, I like wear makeup to play and things like that, which is like, Mm kind of unconventional especially if you're playing more competitive and things like that I think I've always had that kind of 
first impression of being of people not really knowing like that I play and like I'm not taken very seriously at the beginning and I think it comes what it comes down to is kind of like expectations and what that kind of means for like when you're meeting new people um, and they don't really know what your playing style is like. So have you guys ever had an encounter with anyone where they had an expectation of you to either like uh, play a certain way or like to dress a certain way when you're playing and you didn't really like either you kind of did know them or you didn't really know them and it was kind of it kind of threw you off a bit. There was a point um, not a point, but, like, a time period where I was playing at club, mm. and I would always come, like, uh, right when it started, so there weren't too many people, mm. um, there yet, mm. and for a while, if I played, uh, against a guy that I didn't really know, like, mm. maybe, like, of course, they're a club member, and I've seen them a few times, but I've never mm. actually played against them, mm. for a while, if I played against a guy that I didn't know, mm. they would always flick me on the first serve. Oh, yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah I know. Oh, yeah. And, I, and I'm like, I, hate those. I, I don't know if it's because, like, they want to start, like, winning off the bat and it's a competitive thing, which mm. I understand, or if it's, like, they're not used to playing maybe a girl who is a bit more competitive, so mm. they just kind of, like, want to take advantage of advantage of that yes but it was always guys doing it to me who I didn't know like if it's a guy that I know like a friend that they want to do it to me but it's always guys who didn't know me and I was so like confused Mm -hmm. do you ever flick them back (laughs) uh I wouldn't do it right away I do it on the last point (laughs) (laughs) that would feel so nice if you flick them on the last point and like they did get it and you won that game oh my god (laughs) that would actually feel so nice I was almost going to say um, I do the opposite thing. So it's I kind of want to set their expectations for my level of play mm. every time I play a set of guys. Okay. Um, so, like, if they ever invite me, they would definitely 100% underestimate me mm. in the first few shots. Mm-hmm. But just within the first two shots, I make sure to smash or kill the bird at them. Mm-hmm. So then they reset their expectations <laughs> oh, <laughs> and bring so- their best foot forward. That's what I personally do. That's so yeah. evil, but I love it. <laughs> I, I love it. I love it, Miriam. <laughs> like you're like stop. No, I am. Yeah. I am not yeah. what you think I am. Yeah. Exactly. It's like I can actually play. Please take me seriously. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I've definitely had like similar experiences to Miriam too, mm-hmm. where because I'm from Edmonton and then I was working in Calgary mm-hmm. um, for a co-op term, mm-hmm. and so like nobody knew me when I went to go play at a club, mm-hmm. and of course like I'm like small Asian short girl <laughs> like walking into a badminton place and like asking people to play games with me mm-hmm. and honestly like they didn't know what I was like what level I would be playing at right mm-hmm. and maybe because of my physique that I'm smaller mm-hmm. then they'll probably think that I'm not too strong in playing like a doubles game mm-hmm. if there are like all guys on the court mm-hmm. so definitely like it was harder at first to get somebody to play games with you mm-hmm. but like once you get on court and you start playing and they can kind of see like oh yeah okay she's not just like a newbie here mm-hmm. and has some like experience playing then it is it gets easier and easier to make friends at that point and get more games in mm-hmm. also just want to set something for any of the listeners out there especially if you're a guy <laughs> this podcast is definitely not to attack men or like guys or whatsoever when you when we're playing badminton I think we're all just more so speaking through our experience experiences just because the majority of badminton players especially when you are a female playing at a more like a higher level in a way it is you do encounter more guys and that's why this topic kind of comes out too so I just want to lay it straight out there for anyone is <laughs> listening we are not anti-men right now we love you <laughs> we're just just sharing our perspectives but yeah. yeah, I think like um, we're sharing our experiences specifically mm-hmm. that might deal with 
um, how we're treated on court. So Mm -hmm. um, hopefully this can help people kind of think through their own experiences and the expectations that they might have for other female players on court. So I hope um, a lot of people can learn from our experiences. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah and hopefully like nobody gets discouraged if let's say like you get turned down the first time for asking somebody to play a game with you mm-hmm. as a female mm-hmm. and like just push through and if you really love the sport then like your your time will come you're, you will you will shine no worries mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, you will shine mm-hmm. take it as an opportunity to work on your technique yeah. and improve together yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I guess like I can like pretty much overall I can speak for a lot of like female players that are playing like at our similar levels or like higher or things like that that like like we do want to see more females out there playing like more like girls trying to like you know get into the more competitive side if they want to and like what um echoing what everyone else is saying like not to be too discouraged to like just keep trying keep practicing you know like we I think we've all had like our shares of kind of struggles of trying to break out into playing with like different people and playing like different styles and trying to get our footing in terms of like being competitive and like wanting to be at the same level as everyone else and then trying to really like show that and um, have that reflected in our skills by um you know I guess at the end of the day like what they're, you guys are saying like like playing and just diversifying and like trying it out you know like trying out those tournaments every here and then and just not being discouraged too much by it. So the last thing I kind of want to touch on as well is what do you think either the badminton community or like different clubs can do to help either attract more girls into the sport or help retain more girls in the sport? Just because like there is like a great loss as you guys were all talking about, especially um, Amanda and Miriam when you're talking about your coaching and you see that kind of transition as they get older, like less people like wanting to stay in the sport. Like have you guys ever thought of like, like, hmm, like these are potential ideas we could pro- possibly do to kind of help keep them more like wanting to come back more, you know? I think coaching, of course, has a big impact on it because mm-hmm. I know when I was younger and when I was learning badminton, mm-hmm. luckily I had uh, for junior high, I had like a female coach. Mm-hmm. So uh, she was really encouraging towards me. So I think that was a good environment for me. But when I got to high school, it was mostly male coaches and like they were amazing and I learned so much from them. But when I had like a female coach, I think I was able to get closer with them Mm -hmm. and just kind of relate a little bit more because like if they're teaching me about mix, for example, Mm -hmm. um, like they've been on the court as a girl Mm -hmm. and they can tell me like direct experiences. Mm -hmm. And I think it's also good, um, especially for younger uh, players just to see like a role model mm-hmm. uh, as a and to for myself to be a female badminton coach as a role model for all these uh, younger kids mm-hmm. at be active mm-hmm. and so I try to kind of tell my students like oh I play badminton tournaments I play with um, everyone all the time mm-hmm. so they'll kind of see me and they want to do, I hope they want to do the same someday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with Amanda. I think seeing female role models is really, really important. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think another thing that's very important is you don't create a barrier between females and males. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, for when you're training your students, get your girl students to play with your boy students Mm -hmm. and yeah, get them, to you know mingle and socialize in that way Mm -hmm. and once they see that you can make a lot of friends and have Mm -hmm. a lot of fun playing the sport I think Mm -hmm. you can have more attention Mm -hmm. that way I think from my perspective more more from like a community perspective so because I have played at a lot of like recreational clubs throughout the city and then of course like the university badminton club is a huge one as well Mm -hmm. I think like the lineup system like how you do it could be really important Mm -hmm. because that kind of helps you diversify like your games and the types of players that you play with Mm -hmm. um what like no matter like what gender they are but just like the skills in the background Mm -hmm. so like I find 
the types of lineup systems that work the best are I think the university one is quite well like it works quite well because if you're not familiar with names and you just kind of put your card in and you can Mm -hmm. play with whoever Mm -hmm. and then or even just like anonymous lining up where you just put your rackets in a box too Mm -hmm. that works really well so then there's like no bias when you're like lining up you're like trying to like stack a core and trying to get uh really good games and like isolating other players that are maybe not the same level as you Mm -hmm. so I think that would be really well in creating like just a stronger, tighter knit community in like the badminton scene, mm-hmm. and you'll see more like member re- member retention in general. I totally agree with everything that you all said. I think overall, it's just I guess very important just to make sure everyone's kind of mixing together, and like I think being inclusive of one another, like no matter like whatever gender across the spectrum that you are, just having that sense of like connectedness, community, and like that willingness to kind of like intermingle also like learn from each other and like learn to just like work with each other um makes it a lot nicer and I guess more fun for everyone to want to participate in the sport fairly evenly Mm -hmm. it definitely makes for a better experience for everybody Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, for sure so unfortunately that is all the time we have for today and I would like to thank all our guests for making the time to appear on our podcast and providing so much insight for um, the topic for today and I would also like to thank our listeners for tuning in We will continue to release our new podcast on either Fridays or Saturdays, and you can catch that through our Facebook or Instagram. So until next time, that is the tea.